If you find yourself with a camera in your hand and you want to learn how to use it, please subscribe to this channel, like the videos, comment down below what you would like to learn more about. We Hi Photos subscribers. So this video we are discussing hyperfocal distances or hyperfocal depth of field. It's a very technical word, college words type of description or title, but basically the the other terms that are used for this are technically not correct, but it gives you an idea of what we're talking about, which is why they use it, because it kind of portrays what they see in the photographs. It's called infinity focus. Now, infinity focus technically does not exist, because even our eyes don't do infinity focus. Infinity focus means that everything is in focus, from very close to very far away. So if infinity focus doesn't exist, how do we achieve what we've seen before in other photographs? You might get a new computer or a new um, MacBook Pro laptop or a MacBook Air, and they have some very intriguing, very uh, attractive photographs of backgrounds that are, that are used in there, and they have those type of hyperfocal distance uh, depth of field photographs on the background. So how does that happen? What do you do? This is one of the things that Ansel Adams, who was the uh, national park photographer, did when he was doing landscapes. He was able to use the hyperfocal aspects of his camera and the aperture of his lens to get a majority of what his camera was viewing in focus. So it was a very pleasing uh, view of the national parks in the U.S. that he was imaging and, and other landscapes and things that he was very, very good at. So how do you get this equation down so that you can use this in your camera and get a majority of your foreground and a majority of your background in focus and everything looks to be sharp, clear, clean? Well, I found one of the resources that helps me figure this out and something that you might be able to use yourself is a website called photopills.com. Photopills uh, is not a sponsor, is not, uh, I'm not affiliate of theirs. I'm mentioning this because it's a free resource that I use on their website. Uh, they have an app you can download on your smartphone. Uh, it's in Google Play and in um, the Apple, uh, app store so you can download for your your Samsung's and and your other uh, smartphones that use Google Play or from your your Apple devices uh, it's a ten dollar app in the Apple I uh, Apple app store so it's not a free app um, they do develop it and so then they charge for it it has some very nice features such as using this depth of field uh, option you can tell it what camera you're using, the lens you're using, the uh, zoom focal distance that you have set, whether it's 35 millimeter, 28, 14, 11, and it starts doing some of the calculations for you. You set the specific uh, distance and depth of focal area that you want set, and then it tells you your uh, focal value number that you need to rotate your focus ring to on your lens. That's all very nice and convenient. If you don't want to spend the $10 and you need to do some research before you go out and shoot and you need to get some of the, the pre-planned items worked out before you get out there. Or if you have LTE, 5G, or 4G access on your mobile devices, you can use your phone or um, LTE enabled iPads or smart tablets to be able to go to the website and do some of this calculation through the tables or the calculators they have on their website while you're in the field. Now it's going to be important that the setup for shooting landscapes or things like this with the hyperfocal distance uh, focus in mind, you're going to need to have your camera on a tripod so that your camera's not moving. Um, if you're trying to image something that is moving in your scenery, then you may want to set up well in advance so that you are ready. For instance, if it's a sailing vessel out on the water, you're on the shore, you set up your camera on shore, you set up your 
your camera and get your, your hypo, hyperfocal distance calculations all worked out so that by the time you're ready to actuate the shutter and get that shot, you have your ISO, shutter speed, aperture all set up so that you can dial in that focus just right. So that your ship, uh, for instance, uh, we're talking about a sailing ship, sailing, sailing vessel on the water, is in focus as sharp and tack as possible, tack sharp, so that anything in the foreground looks to be in focus and anything in the background looks to be in focus, although it'll have varying shades of uh, dispersing clarity for that focus the further it gets away from that however wide area your uh, sailing vessel is in. All of that information is really heady and I apologize, but there is one uh, important um, detail I want to give you because I just explained a whole lot of detailed information but if you go to the website https colon slash slash I'll give this to you both in the description and I'll try to work with my editor to get this typed out on the screen for you but it'll be a link in the description for you www.photopills.com slash calculators slash depth of field or DOF is the abbreviation. That's how they have it in URL, DOF-table, which is spelled T-A-B-L-E. Uh, that will give you a resource so that when you have selected the camera, the focal length that you are using, the units you wanna measure in, whether that's meters, feet, um, the other options they have are inches and centimeters, and you can tell it that you want to calculate the total depth of field or the depth of field near and the far plane for what will be in focus. So I hope those things help you and, and you understand the details about that. We can go into more detail if you want on more about hyperfocal depth of field, what the depth of field is and how to adjust and calculate. And the more you work with it, the more you understand the depth of field and how that narrows the closer you are or widens the further out you are and how it is affected by the different types of lenses you have, the more it'll become more intuitive and you won't have to depend so much on these tools. But if you want to do the calculation so that the image you achieve, whether by contract or something you wanna to add to your portfolio, is exactly as you intend it and, and you envision it in your mind, then these things are gonna be helpful for you as you plan and get everything set up for your images. But for instance, on that website, uh, that specific page of slash calculators slash DOF dash table, then you will find after setting the camera focal length, the units of measure and the, the way you want to calculate, it'll give you a left column so your, your X axis on the table is descending from one or two feet out to oh, almost, yeah, they go out to 500 feet as far as how far away your um, object is that you want to focus on. And it'll go up all the way to, I wonder that, wow, that's incredible. They go all the way up to F stop 1024. Now, I don't know very many lenses that'll do that. Uh, most of the lenses I've seen um, will go up to maybe f-stop 32. Um, very few, if any lenses that I know of, will actually get up to a thousand. However, um, maybe there's something out there incredible that I just don't have the money to buy yet. Uh, but I hope this information, this content has added value to your photography. And if you haven't found the website yet, Photo Pills, I hope it's something that, that does give you some information and something to find and, and a resource to use. They've got several calculators on their website and this depth of field calculator table is something that is super helpful to me. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and comment down below. And if you're not already a subscriber, we would appreciate your subscription. Thank you so much, God bless.